Do you want a risk register for your business where you don't want to pay for an expensive third-party system? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a risk register using Microsoft SharePoint Online. My name is Dougie Wood, and I'm a Microsoft MVP. I've been working with SharePoint for the past 20 years, and I've also been helping my customers all over the world build out QMS solutions using SharePoint to achieve things like ISO 9001. If you need help building a SharePoint solution like this, then book in a free consultation with me using the link in the description below. Okay, so this video is a follow-on where I'm showing how to build out certain components of a QMS within SharePoint. Things like live audits, NCRs, uh, corrective and preventive actions. This is all about the risk management components. So we're gonna start off by building a SharePoint list list which is referred to as our risk register. Now I like to use the default ID field that comes with every SharePoint list which basically means we have a unique identifier for every row that's in our SharePoint risk register list. The, I am going to obviously add in my own column so I'm going to start with category which might be operations, supplier, customer, compliance and this can be anything you like and of course we can also color code them if we wanted to make them stand out a bit more. Um, we would typically add other fields, things like date identified, which would just be a date, like a calendar picker, uh, the person who is the owner, so there's a people lookup field, but within reason you can have whatever fields you like within here, it doesn't, I mean every customer I work with that builds out a QMS in SharePoint, they all have slightly different fields that they want to have in here, but I'm just going to show you what most people, 80% of what the fields that most people would have. Now, there is usually a component of trying to calculate what the risk score would be. So for each of the items in the risk register, we would want to know what the risk score would be. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this, but typically what we need to do is would combine something like um, the risk likelihood with the risk impact. Now, the first way, if we were just to do it based on, say, words like low, medium impact, we would just have a drop down like that. The other way, if we actually wanted to have an automatic calculation, is we would need to have number fields. So rather than sort of saying the risk is low, medium, or high, um, what we would need to do is actually assign it a number. So in this case, we're going to say risk likelihood, um, and then we're going to give it a number range. So again, this could be, say, 1 to 10, but for most people, this might be, say, 1 to 5. And we're going to specify that actually this is the risk likelihood, and in brackets, um, we're just going to put that this is the one to five. So we know that this is what that column is used for. Again, you would only go with text or number, but I'm showing you both. I'm showing you how you could do it with the text drop down, and I'm also showing you how you could do it with a number. So if now we wanted to get an automatic calculation, we need to create a calculated column with inside of SharePoint. Now, to do this, we need to go to the list settings and then click create column as it's not available to create directly inside the SharePoint list as a modern field. So I'm going to select on my calculated column, and now the calculation to basically work out my risk score um, would be the risk likelihood, which is the 1 to 5 that we said before. Um, and then basically we're, we're timesing that by the risk impact, again, 1 to 5. We need to set the number of decimal places, so in this case it's zero, uh, and I've just realized as well um, that I need to actually put the name in the column. It's some, sometimes when you change the column type, it loses the column name across the top, so I just need to put that back in there. Uh, then click on OK, and then that's then added my column back into my list. So all I need to do is go back into that list and create a risk register item. So you can see that's what it would look like if we just wanted the text risk likelihood and the risk impact. But because we're going to use numbers, and you can see because I set the range to be, it has to be between one to five, it's giving me a little message saying I can't use six or I couldn't use zero. So I'm going to set that to be five. And now you can see the risk likelihood um, is one and the risk impact is five. So that gives us a risk score of five. Um, so I'm just actually just going to delete those text options because for this system, I'm going to use a numbering system. I can also um, provide a bit of conditional formatting to this. So say, for example, if it was over a certain number and a certain risk score, I might want it to turn red. So you can see here we can apply some simple logic which says if the risk score is greater than or equal to five, then it's going to be red. However, we also potentially would want to add some other conditions in here to say if the risk score is less than or equal to four, then it's going to be 
uh, green and we're happy with that so whatever your numbering is um, you can obviously update that and you can say now it's three um, it's changed to green rather than being red but this is completely up to you obviously everyone would slightly have different scores depending on how they wanted to approach things if you're interested in this system then we do deploy it at a fixed price to our customers get in touch for a free demo using the link in the description below there's some other columns that we'd also want to add to our risk register, things like existing controls um, and some uh, uh, mitigation actions, which again would be a multiple description box of text. We're also going to another people field for the mitigation uh, owner as well, so we can tag someone against this. Again, this could be used for things like workflows to automatically notify people. The target due date. Um, as well as that, you could have the status to say whether it's open, uh, whether it's in progress, uh, whether it's been complete. And again, we can color code these as well. So it's nice and easy at a glance to see what those are. And the default value is most likely going to be open when we first create a risk register item. We're also going to put a review date. Now, this will basically drive the automated workflow that we will build with Power Automate to send a notification to both the owner and the mitigation owner as well. So um it's really useful to think about the data that you're capturing in these lists and what you can pass into a workflow for escalations and reminders and things like that so you can see this is what the risk register form now looks like i'm just going to populate this with a little bit of sample data of course i've still got the uh, date field there set to the us uh, time zone but i can easily set that to uh, british time zone or any other kind of region of the world i'm now just pasting in some mock example data and as you may know by now if you've been watching these videos of me building this QMS in SharePoint, I like to have plenty of sample data. And I also believe that the sample data should, in fact, be as close to reality as possible. So it's obvious when people are looking at this what this looks like. And when you're going for a testing period, um, people can feed back and say, oh, actually, we're missing this type of information. Whereas if you just put lorem ipsum or just some random typed characters into each of these fields, you're not going to really be able to properly test this and get a good feel for what the system is supposed to be doing. So again, I'm just going to go through and add in um, some more test data. In fact, I'm going to speed up this process now just so you don't have to sit there um, forever and, and, and watch it, watch me typing in um, some data. But you can also see at the bottom there, we do have the attachments field. So again, as part of the risk register, it might be uh, photographs, um, it might be documents. There's all sorts of different things you might choose to attach directly to um, that item as well. So I'm just gonna fast forward um, as we add a few more items in, but you can see now this is really coming together. I can create a new view. So I could filter where basically I am the owner. I could save this view and call this my, my risk items. And you can see I can jump between all items and then any of the items where I am the owner. So it's filtering out Chris in this scenario when I'm jumping to my risk items. So it's, again, you could do that with any column. Um, it's a nice way of filtering, sorting uh, the data so you can see that. So the next thing we're going to do as part of our risk management is we're going to actually create our FMEA list. Now, essentially, um, we're going to do a very similar process where we're going to go and create our list. Um, and this essentially is for uh, failure modes and, and effects analysis that's part of this failure management. So we'd want to know the ID, the title, uh, whether it's a process or product, the failure mode, um, as well as the effect, the severity, which again, if we're wanting to sort of calculate um, scores based on this we would obviously want to make them number fields if it's just fine to be text as a drop down that you're, you're happy with then obviously you can use a choice field or a text field to populate that as well so we've got severity cause occurrence um as well as our detection so now we're going to create a risk uh priority number an rpn which again is going to be a calculated column and this is why we needed those number fields before so i'm going to scroll down um, and I'm going to select the fields that I need, which is in this case is going to be severity, uh, which is then basically going to be times by, um, where are we here, um, our occurrence. Uh, and then that is going to be times by our uh, detection. And we want it to be a number field. Again, we don't want any decimal places in this. Um, and we do want it in our default view, so I'm just going to click that checkbox, click on OK, and that's then created me my calculated column. Again, if I go back into uh, my FMEA list, 
Now, um, basically, when we create our items now in this list, you can see it will automatically have a risk priority number. So I'm just going to save that view just to make sure we can, we can get back to that. We'll come and add some data in a second. Um, but um, first, I'm just going to show you adding a couple more columns. So I'm going to add in a uh, action, which is going to be multiple lines of text, because we're expecting that someone's going to fill out quite a bit of information uh, when they, they come through to this. Um, we're also going to create a column for the action owner, which again is going to be a people field, so we can look up somebody. The target date, as well as the status. Now, so things like the target date could automatically be calculated as well. So based on the severity, it could set a target date. Now, this is something we would have to build with Power Automate, but it's perfectly feasible, and it's something that most of my customers that build out this type of solution would expect. So that's why I'm saying that review date, again, is another date field um, to be used as part of the automated workflows to remind the owners um, of this FMEA item. Uh, to take action. So again, review dates are really useful. They can be plugged into workflows and we can use them to um, basically contact uh, somebody and say, hey, this, this needs to be escalated. I also want to add in a lookup to my risk register. So I'm going to add in a risk register ID. Now I'm just going to move that column to the top of the form because when I actually create an item, I want to automatically tag this FM EA item against one of my risk register items because it relates directly to it. Again, I'm just going to populate this now with a little bit of sample data um, that I've got off screen. Again, we want to make sure we've got plenty of realistic looking data in this. So when it comes time for people in our business to actually come and test this, and in my case, it's my customers come and test this, um, I want to make sure that they fully understand what this looks like and that it's capturing all the information that they want it to capture. So you can see now if I was to relate this to risk register ID 3 um, and the title of this is non-conformance in production, the process or product, it's assembly line, it's a process. Again, that could be the title, but it could also that could easily be a drop down field, whether you select or a checkbox that says it's a process um, or a product. It could be a lookup, so you could look up a list of products um, or a list of process names that you're maintaining separately as well. Um, but as you can see, I'm just trying to populate this now with, with plenty of information. And I'm trying to actually create an FMEA item per risk register item that I've got here, just to make it obvious. We can also look up the risk register um, ID. As I say, just by clicking on it, it can actually jump us directly to what that item is as well. Now, I'm just going to move these columns around a little bit, just so it makes a bit more sense. We've got our risk register ID there, and by clicking on it, you can see the full risk register details um, for that particular record as well, so you can nicely jump backwards and forwards into that area. Um, now, the final thing that I'm going to create is a risk mitigation actions list. Now, I have already previously created a video on corrective and preventative actions as a list. However, some people do actually prefer to break out those actions, these risk mitigation actions, separate from their CAPA or corrective preventative actions, if you like. Now, you can see I'm looking up my, uh, my register ID here uh, that I'm assigning it to. Um, I'm using a title field. I beginning of this list creation, I'm also using the default ID field. Um, so each of the risk and mitigation actions have their own unique ID. I'm also setting a priority. <coughs> Again, the priority could be used for escalation. So if it's a high priority, it might automatically assign a slightly different um, time frame that the, the target date, due date that we want it to be completed within. Um, it might notify people quicker. Um, if it's still, say for example, if it's past its due date, we might want a workflow which automatically looks to see if it's been complete or not. And if it hasn't, then it's going to escalate that and send an email or a Teams message to someone to come and take a look at that. Now you can see I've, I've got my form here. I can create a title um, for this particular risk mitigation action. So maybe it's backup supplier deliveries. I can assign the risk register ID, which is number two. Um, I'm also just mentioning here that the due date could be automated based on priority. So if the priority was high, it might say the due date is within the next few days. If it was medium, it might be a week. If it was low, it might be a couple of months or, or whatever. And, and that's completely up to you how that is configured. As I say, these systems, this is kind of like 80% of a system, but most of our customers do actually choose to um, 
customize it slightly further and have different types of escalations, um, different columns, um, and, and the workflows are slightly different, but the, the kind of the underlying functionality is very much the same. So there we go. Um, this is our risk management system. Uh, you can see here, it starts off with our risk register. As we scroll along, we're keeping our ID on the left-hand side. We then have our FMEA list, which has items within there which are tagged against individual register uh, items. And then finally, we have our risk mitigation actions list, which is the actual actions which come out the back of that, which are associated again to our register. If you enjoyed that video, please do subscribe. Also, continue to watch me build out QMS in SharePoint by clicking on the video on the screen now. See you there.